first, as far as, you know, the simple question of can they be healed, I think the answer is a resounding yes. They can be healed because God can do anything he wants to do. I mean, he's creator of all. He is all-powerful. Uh, he is, you know, the designer of heaven and earth. So he can do whatever he wants to do. Now, the question is, is, is everyone healed? Uh, is every single Christian healed? Now, unfortunately, there are some crazy folks out there, some teachers of the Bible or so-called teachers who would tell you, they would literally tell you, yes, every Christian is healed. They just don't know it. <laughs> well, that's not true. That is just complete garbage. They would say something like, yes, because of the finished work of Jesus Christ, every single person is healed of every ailment. They just don't realize it. Well, what that is is basically some sort of amalgamation of Christian science and Gnosticism. Christian science, those are the guys that are running around saying, you know, you're healed, you just don't know it. You're, you're not even sick, you just think you are. Well, that's Christian science, not, not Christianity. And then you've got Gnosticism where they're worshiping at the feet of knowledge and this, this sort of secret knowledge you need to tap into. Instead of needing to receive something, you just need to know something. Well, that's not what the Bible teaches. With salvation, we received something, or rather, we received someone. It's the same thing with healing. When people got healed in the Bible, they received healing. They had to receive it. I mean, there was a moment when they were not healed, and the next moment, they were healed. And when they were healed, it was definite, it was permanent, it was instant, and it was without question. That's how people were healed in the Bible. So these guys today that are running around saying, you're healed, you just don't realize it, that is not in the Bible, that is not scriptural. And then you say, well, wait a minute, why am I not experiencing healing? And they say, well, it's your fault, it's your lack of faith. And then from there, you beat yourself up for the next 10 years, wondering why you can't muster up enough faith to experience what you supposedly already have. And then it's all on you. The weight of your faith is on your shoulders. And woe is me. It works for other Christians. It just doesn't work for me. So, you know, I'm tired of hearing that stuff. It's a bunch of garbage. I've seen it damage people. I've seen it depress people. I've seen it debilitate people to the point that it just makes me sick. And what we need to recognize is God is all-powerful. He does miracles. But those miracles are called miracles for a reason because they're rare and they're miraculous. So, you know, uh, again, healing was real, it was actual, it was instant, it was permanent, and it was without question in the scriptures. And when God does a miracle like that today, sure, you know, people are progressively being healed through medicine and through doctors, and we pray for them, and God answers prayer, and that's great. But that's not these instant miracles from the Bible that I'm talking about. Those also can happen but they are not a sure thing, and that's where people are off base. When these preachers and teachers tell people that their physical healing is a sure thing, then it sets people up for expectations from God that many times are not met, and then quickly what follows is disappointment with God. And then their whole relationship ends up being shipwrecked because they think it's their fault, it's their lack of faith, and Jesus said, faith the size of a mustard seed is enough. Now, if you've ever seen a mustard seed, that is pretty tiny. The point is, it's not about the size of your faith. You're not supposed to wake up every day and beat yourself up about the size of your faith. It's about the object of your faith. And if the object of your faith is some sort of guaranteed healing Santa Claus on this side of heaven, no wonder you're disappointed. Because there is no guaranteed healing Santa Claus. Instead, what we see in the scriptures, we see the Apostle Paul asking three times, three times for this thorn in the flesh to be taken from him. And God's answer is, not right now. My grace is enough for you. Uh, we see the young pastor Timothy, he's got frequent stomach ailments. I quote, frequent stomach ailments. The Apostle Paul says, he doesn't say, hey, hey, Tim, you need more faith. Hey, Tim, you need to name it. Hey, Tim, you need to claim it. Hey, Tim, your stomach already feels better. You just don't realize it. Well, he doesn't say any of that. He says, Tim, how about pour yourself a glass of red wine? What is that about? 
Well, he's recognizing that a miracle has not happened. He's recognizing that to date God has not healed him miraculously. So he is prescribing for him the best thing he knows, something physical that may ease the pain of his frequent stomach ailments. Well, in the book of Colossians, they had to take care of Paul. He was sick. He thanks them for taking care of him for so long. Well, why didn't they just zap him? Why didn't Paul just claim his healing? Well, apparently he had to struggle with this sickness for quite some time, and they took care of him. Here's my point. Miracles happen. God can do miracles anytime he wants, but there's a reason we call them miracles, because they are rare and they are not guaranteed. And when we look at God as a miracle slot machine where, you know, I don't know, some teachers say you pour in your tithe, you pull down the handle, and out comes your healing. Other people just say you pour in your faith, pull down the handle, and out comes your healing. God becomes a divine slot machine instead of our Heavenly Father. And then, quite frankly, there'd be no reason. There'd be no reason for heaven. We could just faith our way through perfect health now. We wouldn't need resurrection bodies. We wouldn't need heaven someday. We could just faith, 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 and then experience physical perfection because of our faith. But there is a heaven, and there are new resurrection bodies we receive, and there's a reason for that. And the reason is that guaranteed physical healing on this side of heaven is non-existent. Miracles happen, God does them, but he is calling the shots. And when we look at him as a slot machine, we're denying scripture, we're denying the reality of what apostles and pastors in scripture experienced, and we're basically saying that, you know, we can bark orders at the God of the universe. If we claim it, if we name it, then God responds to us and does what we say, say he should do. And that is not the divine order. The divine order is God calls the shots and we submit. And sometimes he says, my grace is sufficient for you. Now, as a last comment here, I know some people out there, many on the Internet, would try to sort of twist what the thorn in the flesh is. They say, oh, well, you know, that was just an annoying friend. No, it was something physical. How can I know that? Because it says it made him weak. Do annoying friends make you weak? Well, some people say amen to that. But pretty clear from the language there that there was a physical ailment and a physical weakness uh, that Paul was experiencing and it had something to do with sickness or blindness or disease, something that caused weakness in his physical body. It was not an annoying friend. So what they're trying to do there is basically explain it away as an annoying friend so that they can then say, well, the apostles never got sick, never had bad circumstances like that because they were automatically healed all the time. Not the case for them, not the case for us, we need to give up our rights to be healed. Did you hear me on that? Until you give up your right to be healed, which is no right at all. We don't have that right. But we need to relinquish our rights so that we can then see God for who he truly is and stop relating to him because we want to get something. Instead, relate to him because he is Lord of all, God of all, and he is our heavenly father who took our sins away and made us into a brand new creation as his children. So Reggie, I hope that helps as I shared some of my thoughts on sickness and illness and healing today. Again, I do believe in miracles. God does them all the time. He can do what he wants, but they are not guaranteed just because we bark orders at God.